Hallelujah. So today I'm going to be teaching briefly, but before I do that, the Spirit of God commanded me to, um, or instructed me now, to teach on something very, very prona- um, profound. All right, I don't know how many of you have heard about the popular five love languages by Gary Chapman. A lot of you have, right? That's how the Spirit of God took me on a journey while preparing for this message. And I'm going to, I'm going to um, emphasize on those things before we move into the three important needs of a man and a woman. All right, so the first thing I'm going to be talking about is I'm going to be listing the five, laws, the five love languages that we have, just in case you have not heard about them before. And then I'm going to go on to tell you the misconceptions and how they have been misinterpreted. And I'm also going to be teaching you, by the help of the Holy Spirit, how it should be done. Then we will proceed to um, the three important needs of a man and that of a woman. Are we ready to move? Praise God. All right. All right. So now, um, the five love languages, okay, that we all know, the popular five love languages, we have words of affirmation, we have quality time, we have physical touch, we have acts of service, and we have receiving gifts. Now, what are five love languages? Five love languages explains to us or enlightens us that um, when it comes to human beings, when you say the word, I love you, okay, different people hear these particular words in different ways. Praise God. Now, when someone says, I love you, okay, this word they say is cheap, glory to God. But action, okay, makes these words deeper, makes this word have more meaning, glory to God. So, How do people hear, I love you? It could be words of affirmation. Okay, what are words of affirmation? I'm going to explain that. It could be quality time. Glory to God. Spending time with them. Spending time beyond the normal time that you would on a normal day. Making extra efforts to put in extra time into, you know, um, fellowshipping with them. Oh, glory to God. Now, physical touch. That one is there. There's acts of service. Glory to God. I explained that. And then we have receiving gifts. Now, let's quickly run to words of affirmation. Glory to God. Now, words of affirmation. Okay, okay. I'm going to words of affirmation. All right. Um, Words that you are affirming, that you are complimenting, that you are recognizing um, an attribute or something special about the person. Glory to God. Words of affirmation. Now, what are the misconceptions or the uh, mis... What's it called now? Misinterpretations that people that have these love languages have had to go through. Okay, now, people always see people that their love languages or that their love language is words of affirmation. People always see them as people that always want to be praised. Praise God. Ah, what's even wrong with that person? Or, okay, now, I'm talking about spouse now. Let's not, I'm not talking about social relationships. I'm not talking about your friend. I'm talking about your significant other. Praise God. If you are not in a relationship, you might not be able to really relate with what I'm saying. But if you have once been in a relationship, you can cast your mind back and... Uh, and um, what's it called? Put in these teachings into um, the things I'm going to be explaining. All right, so they are usually misinterpreted that as people that always want to be praised. You hear them now. When your love language is a particular um, is a particular thing, that thing becomes a need. Glory to God. That thing becomes a need. It becomes something that you always demand for. It becomes something that you always um, what's it called? Ask for. Now, these people, they always want to be praised. People misinterpret them as people that always want to be praised. You see things like they will keep asking about, how did I do? You know, for example, let's say Ian was sure now, um, being a music minister, praise God, and he has his fiance in the auditorium. So he leads praise and worship now. Let's now imagine that his, one of his, his major love language is words of affirmation. The moment he finished leading that praise, his body will be tricking him. He wants to send out an eye message. He wants to send her a, okay, sorry, a text message, right? He wants to send her a text message and say, how was the praise and worship? You know? And she's like, Jebby, we are worshiping God. <laughs> praise God. But to him, that is him, you understand? That is him feeling like you love me. You were paying attention to what I was doing. Was it nice? At that moment, they're not necessarily asking about the fact that, ah, how was my, how was the session? And I said, but you removed your shoe. That's not what he's asking me about. What he's asking me about? <laughs> Okay, let me pick someone else. It's like I've, I've, I came home too close. <laughs> it's like I came too close <laughs> to the house. All right, so what he's asking about at that point is, I want to hear that you love me, okay? I want to hear I love you. So at that moment, it's time to pick out the things that you appreciated. 
And then, okay, let me not jump ahead of myself. All right, they always want to be praised. Now, the significant other can be like, what's wrong with you? Maybe it's God that we are worshiping. Maybe it's God we are serving. However you do it, God is not after the, the skill. God is after the, the spirit. And, but really, they just want to know that you paid attention. Now, these people could be seen as egoistic too. That's another thing about um, people that their love language is words of affirmation. They can be um, misinterpreted, uh, misinterpreted as egoistic people. Ah, what's even wrong with you? You always want to talk about yourself. You always feel good when people are talking about you. You see such people when they are telling them that, ah, you know, when Miss Stone took the mic like this, hey, everywhere was shaking. Everywhere was vibrating. And then you see, you know, Miss Stone, she literally, Stone cannot, she cannot keep that smile again to herself. She's like, you know, her eyes are like, wow, really? Did I do all that? Wow, you know? They can be misinterpreted as people that are egoistic. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, another thing that these people like this would have been told is that they must have been told that they are self-absorbed. Praise God. You always, want, you always want people to talk about you. You always want me to compliment you. You always want me to say something that has to do with you. Must it always be about you? Can't it be about God? You let praise. Uh-huh. It's God we worship. It's God we serve. Uh-huh. But... How do you think people saw that time when I was leading the praise? It was fine. The person goes forward and says, ah, what of that time when I dropped the mic and I was dancing Makusa? She won't feel it, and I don't know. It just added to the whole thing. Everything was okay. Everything was okay. And the person is like, okay, okay. What of that time that um, it's as if mommy felt the praise was she gone? I saw that she was rolling from one side to the other. How was that time when she was rolling? What was it, you know? Words of affirmation. They just want to hear I love you, basically. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things I wrote here, I said, um, you know, one of the issues that one of the conversations you will hear them say, can't you compliment my efforts? You know, can't you tell me I look good? These are complaints they make, you know. In this new dispensation, all right, one of the ways that people hear words of affirmation, for example, um, you're in a relationship and your significant other is also on Instagram. The person will tell you, can't you like my comments? Can't you share? Can't you comment? You know, you saw it, you scrolled past, but you know, you know, words of affirmation. They want to know that you affirm, you recognize, you identify with what they are doing, and you are, you are, uh, you are feeling what they are doing. Praise God. And then you're not just keeping it to yourself, you are also communicating it. All right? I gave so many examples here. You know, a woman can come. You know, probably there was this plumber, there was this artisan that came to the house to maybe um, fix the tap of the kitchen. And then the man did something that he was not supposed to do. And then the husband wanted to talk. The man's like, no, 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 I can handle him. And the woman goes, you shouldn't do this like this. This, 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 that, that. And she goes to her husband, baby, when I spoke to that plumber, how did I do? Did I handle the situation well? One of the mistakes a man can do and say, ah, oh, you did fine. You did well. You handled him well. Oh, daddy. It's okay. What you said is okay. You know, that's one of the things that can stab and break someone whose love language is words of affirmation. Now, how should it be done? All right, so if you know your better half's love language is words of affirmation, number one, you need to be keen on observation. Praise God. You need to observe because if you affirm something, if you compliment something, it means you have observed it. Praise God. It means you are detailed. Uh uh-uh, uh, this is your hairstyle. I've noticed that this particular one you did is not the long one that you always do. This one is short. And it's not just short that comes. It's this sharp, sharp short. I like it. Oh, she's sharp here. Sharp corner. You know, you know there's a place in Nevada called Sharp Corner. You know, sharp. It's very sharp. As in, uh uh-uh. uh. Very, very beautiful. I like, I like the way it's sharp. You know, I can even see there's a strand of gold. Is it deliberate? Oh, no, it's not, it's not deliberate. I like it. The way there's a red, you know, you have to be keen on observation. If you have to, on, if they have to feel that you are affirming, you know, something special about them. Number two, you can't be a jester. Glory to God. There's a son in the house. He can be, he's a very wonderful jester. You know, the person should just jest. The person looks good though. <laughs> you know, Someone that their love language is words of affirmation. You have just, you have, you have, you have broken something inside that person. Why is your hair like somebody that is going to a circus? Why is your hand like a kinlakba? Why is your tummy like this? Why is your, you can't be a jester. Praise God. You don't wear fine shoes. Do you think these heels are fine? Do you think I should change them? Ah, this one on your leg is like twin, twin stick like this. It's, it's fine. It's okay. You don't mean to say that, but... You are just jesting, you know. Such persons like that, you can't be a jester. If your significant other love language is words of affirmation, that person will never feel you love the person. And one mistake you can now do, you should now go outside with that person. You now compliment someone else. You will hurt your partner seriously. 
someone that we're always jesting about, you're always yabbing in our in our this uh, yabbing. Praise God. You have to be creative with your words. That's another thing. If your significant other love language is words of affirmation, you have to be creative with your words. Okay, you can't just say, um, how is my gown? It's okay. How is my hair? It's fine. It suits you. <laughs> how is this shoe that I'm wearing with this cloth? Is it going? It's fine. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. You know? How is do you think this jacket goes with this tie? What do you think? Okay, it's okay. It's okay. How is the food? Do you like the chicken? Oh, ah. it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> do you like the way I put the the sauce beside the rice? I do not put and food is okay. Food is food. Have you? Nobody should just eat. You know? If your significant other love language is words of affirmation, you cannot sound that way. You have to be creative in your affirmations. Praise God. Oh, I really... The way the jacket... Are you talking about this jacket? It is beautiful. There's a way there's the blue entering inside the tie. There's a way the tie is also talking to the blue. It's like they're talking to each other. You know, there's a way this thing is standing. Like your shoulder is one invisible, like... As if there's one invisible hanger inside your jacket. I just like the way it's standing. You know, there's a way it is right. Be creative with your words. Praise God. Number four, strive to be the first to affirm a deed or an action. It matters to people that their love language is words of affirmation. Praise God. Now, if your spouse is someone that their love language is words of affirmation, and someone affirms them first, you will hear things like, maybe you hear now, this person was the one that, that told me that my shoe is fine. You did not see it, though. You did not see it. Praise God. If your significant other love language or significant other's love language is words of affirmation, strive to be the first to compliment um, a deed or an action or something that they did. Glory to God. It actually always matters to them. All right? Now, number five, the fifth one, avoid monosyllabic words. Yes. No. Okay. Beautiful. Fantastic strong apostolic solid praise God avoid <laughs> monosyllably words alright be more even if you start you can start from there but you know put more drama to it Apo ap it's apostolic I mean this this is wow this is strong so you know the way overflow says solid, solid, solid glory. That's putting emphasis on the solid glory. All right, glory to God. All right, so avoid, in as much as you might not have any other, uh, what's it called now, adjective to describe what is going on. Amen. You can put more drama into the word you want to use. Amen. Number two, let's quickly fly. Quality time. Quality time. I defined it earlier. Now, what are the misinterpretations that those that have this love language go through? Number one, they are always being told that they are too needy or clingy. Glory to God. They are too needy or clingy. Why, why are you calling me? Why are you calling me? Must you call me? I'm missing you. When will you come back home? They are too needy or clingy. Number two, they could be misinterpreted as being weak. Praise God. So you cannot do anything without me, Abby. If you don't see me, if you don't see me, you cannot, you cannot... It's because I served the food together. I wanted us to eat the food together. Hey, uh, hey, uh, Peleo, love in Tokyo. I'm not coming back now. There's nothing, there's no reason for me to come. They can be misinterpreted as people that are being weak. Praise God. All right. So you can't do anything without me. So if you don't see me, you cannot, you, you cannot drive you by yourself to go from point A to point B. You are waiting for me, Abby. Oh, yeah, sit down there and wait for me. Wait for me very well. Praise God. It's not as if I can't drive. I just want you to be with me. I just wanted you just to go together. It's not as if. Must we go together? Must we go together? Praise God. They always want to find any and every opportunity to spend time with you. Why? Because that is their love language. Now, oftentimes, people will always, um, what's it called now? They will always want to love you the way they understand love. Do you understand? They would always want to love you the way they understand how to be loved. Now, how to understand people's love language is take notes on how they love you. Praise God. I don't know, ladies, how many of you have been in a relationship where um, you keep buying gifts for this guy? Now, oftentimes, when a lady is buying so many gifts for you, it's because her love language is gifts. 
Now, the mistake the guys do is that ah, she's always buying things for me. It's like she has plenty of money on her hand and they don't now buy gifts for them. Ah, maybe I would have called you just because I don't have time. Pam, she has sent you a time. I would have charged you this morning just because my data is just a matter. Pam, she has sent you data. Your birthday. Hmm. Let's not go there. That's not the type of person I will give you singlet and boxers. She would think about that gift. It must minister, I love you to you. Praise God. Oftentimes, how to understand people's love languages, take note on how they love you. Praise the Lord. So, another misinterpretation for quality time, okay, is they could be misinterpreted. Okay, yes. Then now, people that have quality time, quality time as their love language, they could also be seen as jobless people. You are not even serious with your life. Praise God. You know, I have to pray six hours every day. You want me to be talking with you? What should we be talking about? What should we be doing? You know, I have to. There are so many things I have to do. Be serious with your life. It's like you don't have anything to do, Abby. I will, I will find something for you to do. I will find you something. I will get you something. I will get you busy. I'm not being serious with your lives. Amen. So how should this be done? Number one, define your priorities from the start. Okay? Now, if you understand that there's someone that you are in a relationship with or you are married to, okay, that has quality time as their love language, the first thing you want to understand after identifying it is you want to define priorities. Let's talk. I have a job, okay? I'm a pastor. Now, one of the things you can also do is run your schedule with them. Okay, when I wake up by 4 a.m., I usually pray between 4 and 8. I would appreciate if you respect that time. Okay, by 2 p.m., I always do so, 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 and so. Um, I'm usually free from 4 to 10. You can come and talk to me about anything. We can always, you know, it's not as if you're putting them on a schedule, but let them know what is priority, especially if you have ordinances. Okay, let them know your ordinances. Glory to God. The second thing you want to do is schedule timeouts for the person. Okay, you have to be deliberate about, about um, the time you spend with them. Okay, so you can say, okay, um, we have this day we spend together. My Saturdays are for you. The moment I open my eyes on a Saturday morning till 10 a.m. is me and you. We are going to talk. I'm talking about married folks now. Glory to God. Yeah. All right. So back to what I was saying. <laughs> now from when I open my eyes till 10 a.m., we will cuddle. We will look at each other's eyes. I will rub your hair. I will rub your nose. You know, I rub what needs to be rubbed. Glory to God. And they will spend time with each other. Amen. You tell me everything that is on your heart. What happened to you? What did they do to you on Tuesday? Talk to me about it on Saturday. What happened to you on Thursday? Open up. I'm listening to you. All right? But when I come back from work, I might not be able to give you up to three hours that you always ask for. But can we do about 30 minutes? You know that the person is going to do 40 minutes. So why not just bring it back to 30 minutes? So that eventually we will end up with all the excesses of, oh yeah, let's sleep. Oh yeah, good night. No, you tell me good night. Oh yeah, good night. Have you slept? Are you sleeping? Mm -mm. <laughs> Don't give sarcastic answers like, no, I'm counting beans. I'm picking beans. No. Okay? I'm just about to sleep. I, I, I already feel sleepy. Um, can, we, can we talk tomorrow? Okay, do you know what? I'm just going to give you five minutes. What do you want to talk about? It's not as if I have anything to talk about. I just want us to talk. What do you want us to talk about? You know? Just you can make um, room, but of course, always make sure that you discuss... Um, your priorities, and also schedule time out. Okay, if you don't schedule time out, you'll discover that eventually you don't get to do it because it is not your love language. It is the other person's love language. And the aim is to let this person hear, I love you, not about you, necessarily. Okay, number three, during time out, be present indeed. Okay, don't be elsewhere. Now, another, the issue with people that have quality time as a love language is that that time that you have scheduled out, if they don't feel like they have your 100%, they don't feel like you spent time with them. You might have spent six hours with the person and the person has said, you that you were here all along and you were pressing your phone. It's not as if you stayed with me. You stayed with Instagram today. It's not me you stayed with. Glory to God. So if you are there for them, be present indeed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Drop your phone. 100% attention. Um, not passive listening. Active listening. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Are you serious? That happened. Wow. Boy. This should be addressed. You, you think so too, right? I think so too. Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. So you are talking and you are there. Praise God. Not, are you listening to me? Ah, yes. Now, what you said last was that the guy gave the lady Amala 15 era. Amala 15 era. That's what he said last night. I'm listening to you. Ah, what do you mean? I'm, I'm listening. 
Praise God. So you have to be there and you have to be presently there. Praise God. Number three, physical touch. Now I'm going to be dissecting this into two. I'm going to be dissecting this into singles and married. Glory to God. I should know what. Okay. Now, the misinterpretation that um, people that have um, this as a love language, number one, they are usually being misinterpreted as being perverts. Glory to God. Um, I want to have a lady. Okay. I want to have a lady. I, I, I'm choosing someone that is not, her arms are not covered so that you can see. Please come up on the altar with me. So, um, people that have physical touch as a love language. So, you hear things like, um, ask me, how are you? I'm fine. I'm so fine. Thank you. Oh, let me hug you. Thank you. You know, how are you doing? How, how are you? School and call. Ah, Kele, sorry. How is everything? They are always touching. Glory to God. Now, if this is a guy, okay, the same thing can be inter- misinterpreted. Glory to God. He, you, he can be misinterpreted as a pervert. Imagine a guy is talking, how are you? How are your daddy? If, can you, you can see she's shifting back already. No, 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 come. They say, how are you doing? I've missed you. What's, what's happening? <laughs> Have you not met people like that? I'm telling you, they feel like they are, they are coming close to you. They feel like this is intimacy. Come, don't run away from me. Uh-huh. Let's stay here. You know, how are you? What's going? They really really want to enter. They don't understand. One of the things I said was they, don't, they, they lack understanding of personal space. They are talking, you are talking to them and maybe just be saying something. Just be talking about, talk about school. Talk about work. So, really, you have a boss that is the, they don't understand personal space. They feel intimacy is is close is physical touch praise god another thing is that they are usually being interpret, misinterpreted as weirdos that, that guy is weird that lady is so weird you know and they are talking to you and you're like have you met people that are talking to you and they are fondling with your hair don't see a, i've been tired lectures you know and you're like don't touch my hair you know i like your earring where did, where did you buy it from did you buy it from? You put it from Songo. Ah! I know that woman. I know her. Shebi, Shebi is that woman that is at that junction. Physical touch. Glory to God. They lack understanding of special personal space. Now they can be also be seen as canal people. Just canal. Just always thinking about sex. Touch. It's always touching somebody. Imagine, you know, especially those that do not have training of any kind. Now, for some of you, you are understanding yourself in this training. So some, a, la- a guy can be talking to a lady and he feels that, you know, intimacy or what's it called now, or closeness is when you can hold the lady here. And guys, it is really wrong to hold a lady in the small of her waist. Don't do that if you are not married to that woman. Glory to God. So the small of her, <laughs> the small of her waist is not for you. Let that space be left for her husband. You want to greet the lady. Oh, hi. How are you doing? God bless you. Thank you so much. You know, her shoulder, not anywhere lower. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, yeah, open your hand now. I'm, I'm, I'm a lady now. I'm your mommy now. What's all that? <laughs> Praise God. So, all right. It's not like, ah, how are you? How are you doing? All right. So, they can, God bless you. Thank you. You can have your seat. You can be misinterpreted as being carnal. Glory to God. Now, how should it be done? If you are not married, all right, be deliberate with hand. To, okay, Tom, please still come. Thank you. Be de- I'm so sorry. Why is she uncomfortable? You should be safe with me. <laughs> All right. Now, if you're not married, be comfortable with hand-to-hand touch. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? Hi. And then don't let it linger. It lingering is you being weird. And then the lady's like, how are you doing? How are classes? There was this cake that you made last week. I saw it. It was so beautiful. There was this time you put pink around it. There was now purple there. You know, you are, you are, you are talented. You are talented. I do, you, you are so talented. Ah, I like you, too. Ah. You know, everybody was talking about you that, ah, this carries cake, this beautiful. You know, I just, can I call you tomorrow? She's already thinking of some, the only thing on her mind is, let go of my hands. Praise God. So don't let it linger. All right. Hi, Tom, how are you doing? Ah, I've, I've, I've heard a lot about you. I, I would have held you out longer, but, you know, I, I would like to then deliberately step away and speak from a distance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, 
get used to familiarize yourself or be deliberate with hand to hand touches shoulder to upper arm to upper arm sorry okay from shoulder here let the touches be here or let it be oh hi that's amazing that's good that's beautiful now note if the lady is on anything armless avoid touching her bare skin a lot of people are not comfortable with it praise god for example if i'm on an armless i would really 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 prefer not you know i don't like that sound praise god so you can leave you know you go, oh, oh wow amazing beautiful you know just oh wow glory to god hallelujah thank you very much now you can pass all right please celebrate her now if you understand that you're the person you are engaged to i'm talking about people that are not married um the, their love language is physical touch one of the things you have to do is you need to have a conversation about boundaries what can you know what can we do and what can't we do all right you can't be in a relationship with someone and you're talking to the person and you forget the person you forget your hand on the person's thighs have you had someone like that you just forget yourself your hand on the person's thighs and you're rubbing the person's knee your hand will slide through the laps to come back to the knee you know all right now you have to talk about that you can't be rubbing my thighs when talking to me you know you have to desist from lingering hugs glory to god oh we've seen each other but the hugs the time we hug is too long all right you can desist from lingering hugs all right you have to let this person know that you're a human being with blood flowing through your veins glory to god hallelujah then proceed to talk about what is okay in your relationship do you understand what i'm saying proceed to talk about what is okay oh we can see you know when we see let's talk like this let's hang out like this if you really have to hold my hands let's hold hands and talk all right but touching my thighs you know then not go and put body on the road you understand what i'm saying yeah yes do not be uh, all right so do not be scared to reach out once in a while especially if this person's love language is physical touch do not be scared to reach out once in a while all right you it can it might start mechanically at first but it will eventually become a flow now married folks while you're married glory to god the world is your own way amen now you understand that your significant other's love language is physical touch this means my guy explored woman enjoy yourself glory to god now most times often times than not whenever the significant other's love language is physical touch the other person is usually not physical touch so now the um what's it called responsibility now is now on the person that their love language is not physical touch to always push out me physical touch glory to god so you have to be deliberate there has to be deliberate meaningful touches per contact for every time you see let there be a touch glory to god it could be a loving peck on the forehead okay a shoulder rub a hand squeeze you know some other intimate touches imagine glory to god so let there be meaningful contact okay let the contact be deliberate let the touches be deliberate at night you're sleeping why not just hold the person and sleep glory to god they might be trying to give you your personal space but if their love language is physical touch they would never say no to a cuddle at night or in the day or in the morning or in the whatever time you want to do it glory to god all right now when you do this this makes the other person aware of your love there's an awareness you know you're just going through and then there's just this <laughs> There's one particular example I'm trying not to give. <laughs> I you know I, w- I won't give it but you the people here can he can see it. All right. So, you know, you you're going they you can give you know meaningful, you can squeeze each other's hands, you know, tap each other, you know, glory to God. Hallelujah. Who touches? Hallelujah. So number four, let's run because we have a lot of things to talk about. Acts of service. Now, misinterpretation of this particular love language. Number one, they are usually misinterpreted to be overbearing, bossy, or people that use people. Okay. Now that I've entered room, I know you will send me fifty messages. I know you will send me fifty things to do. I'm around. Your house boy has come. Your house girl has arrived. You know, couldn't you have gotten up to go and pick that comb by yourself? You are, baby. Please pass me the comb oh thank you so much love language acts of service okay they are usually perceived to people that are unromantic okay how can you say that 
sending me on an errand, sending me 20 things to do in one day is how you are understanding love. You are all romantic. Your mates are buying, you know, for their wives. You, you are here sending me errands. And you are telling me, oh, it's, it's, if you don't love me, you will know. They are usually perceived or they are usually misinterpreted to be insensitive, especially to your own rest time, especially to your own leisure time. Because definitely, what people want to do when they are resting or when they want to be in a romantic setting is definitely not running errands. Praise God. So they are usually perceived to be on every, what's it called now? Insensitive. Okay? You say, my wife, my wife is just, she's just the most insensitive. Is it insensitive or insensitive now? Insensitive. Insensitive woman on earth. That time when I'm saying, okay, oh, ah, let me even set the mood. Let me turn off the light. I've sent the children to the grandmas, to their grandma or to, to, to our friend's house. I, I've turned off the light. Muti toyensi, everywhere the mood is set. I'm not here. Baby, can you go and bring the popcorn in the kitchen? <laughs> Couldn't you have, why did you think of popcorn? You could have brought the popcorn, placed it on the table, and while I'm doing my own, you are doing your own. Must, you send, must I be involved in what you should be involved with? Acts of service. You know, you both of you are watching movie together. You are relaxing. And she just puts her leg. Rub my feet. I, I, I don't want to see a movie together. Just rub my leg. Rub my leg. Just give me a leg massage right now. Are you aware that giving people massages takes energy from them? We are relaxing. Let's relax. I can hold you, but rub my leg. I want you to rub my feet. Give me a foot massage. Acts of service. She just wants to hear I love you at that moment. The man could just be, I mean, there are so many examples, but I don't want to dwell on this too much. Now, how should it be done? Number one, look out for obvious routines. Obvious routines and participate in one or more of them. Glory to God. For example, removing of shoes. The man comes back and you just tell him, sit down. No, relax your back. Relax. And you place his legs on your laps. And you lovingly untie the shoes. You remove it. You remove the socks and you just rub that feet gently and lovingly. You place it gently down. You pick the second foot. Glory to God. You remove his shoes. Remove his socks. You rub the toes. You rub the flat of his feet with your thumb. You place it down. And you stand up and do as if he did not do anything. You want to just be drooling over you like, what did he just do? Ah, this man loves me. Glory to God. Another example. Um, let me see. Holding her handbag. I ah, don't know. Let me hold your handbag. I can carry it. It's small. Don't worry. I'll carry it. Ah, my wife. I'll carry your handbag for you. A woman that acts of service is a love language will just be drooling over you at that moment. Another example, I decided to give examples for this particular one so you understand what I'm saying. Removing his tie and socks. Glory to God. Ah, baby, welcome. And you remove the tie. A man that is love language is act of service would appreciate that so much. You know, you just wake up one morning and you surprisingly bathe the children or the child, as the case may be. Just wakes up and like, ah, I need to go and bathe them. Say, no, 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 I bathed them. They've had breakfast. They are dressed up. A woman that acts of service is a love language. You'll be like, oh, you're kidding me. Oh, thank you. Oh, so I'm not going to bathe them this morning. Acts of service. Glory to God. Make breakfast. Serve breakfast in bed. Acts of service. Sweep the house. Something that you don't do. Like I said, look for obvious routines and participate in one or more of them. Glory to God. Hand over her hairbrush. Probably she just done this hair. And she has worn a wig or, you know, whatever. We wear wigs. Glory to God. And she's just about to say, where's my hairbrush? And then the hairbrush is just there. She's like, thank you. Thank you. Glory to God. Participate in obvious routines. All right? Um, participate in ob obvious routines before the person asks. You know, ah, I think that baby's diapers needs to be changed. Ah, oh, oh, I'll change it in five minutes. Pam, just come back. Ah, did you change the diapers? Yep, I did. You know, little, 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 little things like that without being asked. Okay, is one way to communicate um, acts of service. I love you. Now, under acts of service, I wrote something here that what you are doing must be obvious to the person. This is not eye service. All right? And I wrote that this is not you being responsible. Glory to God. You are not just being responsible. You are not just being a responsible adult. You are deliberate about saying, I love you. So that thing you are doing, that must be communicated as love as I love you must be seen, or should I say must be heard? Do you understand what I'm saying? 
So whatever you're doing, let that person know. Find a way for the person to see that you did those things or you are doing those things. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that the person can understand that, you know, can come into the I love you flow. Hallelujah. Now the final one. Receiving gifts. That's the fifth love language. Now misinterpretation for those that their love language is receiving gifts. Number one, they are usually misinterpreted as being materialistic. She's always, it's always, it's only when I buy a shoe or I buy a gown or I buy, or I buy, that's when she's happy. That's when she'll say, oh, you love me. Very materialistic. My wife does not even appreciate when I write poem for her. Her love language is not words of affirmation. So writing a poem for her, she can just say, ah, this is nice though. And you try though, 10 pages. You want me to read it? Wow. Wow. You love me. You really love me. Ah, and it's still plenty. It goes to the back. Wow. Wow. That's not her love language. But a woman that her love language is words of affirmation, will go and find, she will not read it hastily. We'll go and find the one quiet corner. Turn on one small torchlight. Cover herself with a blanket. With music going under the background. And read it. Oh, he says my eyes are as the dove on the morning sun. Whatever that means. And they will meditate on that. He said my hair is as a palm front on the... Oh my God, my husband. He said that... Uh, he said when I call his name, it sounds like music on Santa morning. Oh, my husband. That's if her love language is words of affirmation. Do you understand? But you not give someone that her love language is gifts. You not give them words of affirmation. Uh-uh. So you wrote all these things for me. That's how you know. All these things for me. Wow. Thank you. It's so much. You really took your time to write it though. <laughs> Will you read it? Uh-uh. Sure, I'll read it now. Uh-uh. Look at, look at Wow, an entire journal for me. You are the man. Now, man, you be. <laughs> Glory to God. Another misconception about those that their love language is receiving gifts. Number two, they can be seen as greedy. You take them out. You're like, buy me this. Ah, look at this thing. Do you know that I always see this on Instagram? Be buy it for me. Buy it for me. It's, it's just 2005. Buy it for me. And in fact, it's like, oh, you put it me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Gift. Glory to God. Um, they can be seen as insensitive to times and seasons because they are usually making demands. Now, whatever there's, <laughs> whenever there's a love language, okay, that love language becomes a need to that person. Glory to God. Now, it could be that, you know, you just discover that, come, sweetheart, I'm a plan for project, come. We're planning for transformation conference. Glory to God. And you saw mustard yellow shoe. And you're saying we should buy mustard yellow shoe. You are, you are, this is not right. This is not fair. We are, we are trusting God for our, for our seed, for our sacrificial seed. And you are saying that we should buy mustard yellow shoe. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. The Praise God. Hallelujah. They can be misinterpreted as insensitive to times and seasons. Okay? Now, how should this be done? How can we balance this out? Number one, commit it to heart. Okay? When it's not on your mind, it might never be done. Okay? Commit it to heart that this person's love language is what? Receiving of gifts. So, commit it to heart. Number two, be creative. Okay? Now, whenever somebody's love language, okay, is receiving of gifts, how the gift is presented matters a lot. Praise God. Now, somebody might buy that person a shoe. I say, oh, I bought you a shoe. Take the shoe. The person says, ah, thank you so much. Yes, I hear I love you. Okay, thank you for the thought. Thank you. Your sister is blessed. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. It's so nice. Purple, pink. The person is not trying to help you make the gift special. To them, it's not really about the gift, the money, the price, the expensiveness or the cheapness of the gift. It's how the gift is. Like I said, receiving of gifts. Glory to God. So for it to be received, there has to be a giving. Amen. You know, or on the other end, you can hide the shoe somewhere. You know, you can buy five chocolates after buying the shoe. You can say, um, maybe I have something to show you. Is it okay? Go to the wardrobe. Left, left compartment. Um, all right. So, uh, chocolate. Yes. Look at the back of the chocolate. And behind the chocolate says, 
go to the bathroom, open the what now? The towel compartment. It's like okay, and goes to the bathroom, opens the towel compartment. Another chocolate in the bathroom. Really, at the back of the chocolate. All right. It says go to the sitting room underneath the center rug. <laughs> this is that this is this is serious. Good ultimate search. Uh huh. Goes to the sitting room. <laughs> he now sees maybe a necklace. Oh, this is so beautiful. Thank you. That's not all. That's not all. That's not all. Um, the, behind the necklace says you are all mine. Oh, it's so precious. Thank you. Have you seen the notes there? The notes there says go to the car. Go to the car. Go to the car. And then behind the car, look at the back seat. And you get that there's a red box with a bow tie that it has a beautiful note on it. Open the box. And then right there, there's a beautiful shoe. Glory to God. And it's like, oh my God. I never imagined this. You know, when um, hmm. when receiving of gifts is their love language, how the gift is being given matters. Glory to God. I remember there was a particular time in our lives where um, I think I've shared this before. Okay, well, you know, there was just a particular phase in our lives. Glory to God. And my husband went out and he came back with a bottle of granite for me. I don't know, you know, I like munching on nuts a lot different nuts so but you know at that season of your life you cannot be buying almond nuts glory to god you cannot be buying cashew nuts hallelujah <laughs> so did i say a bottle of granite when i'm saying bottle of granite i don't mean that big one no. i mean that small one that they will put inside you know that kind of bottle yeah that very small one like this that was what he bought you know and he wrapped it you know with a with a newspaper glory to god then wrapped it with like i can't remember what he then he wrapped it with a cloth Yes, then he put it inside one briefcase he carries to work as a back then. So I got back and he dropped his briefcase in the room. And he says, go to the room. I got you something. So I entered the room. I looked around. I'm like, okay, it's normal, dramatic. Um, maybe put it on the bed, hang it somewhere. I did not see anything. I came out. I didn't see anything. He says, okay, go to my, go check my briefcase. I just got you something small. Just something small. Just to appreciate you. You know, get my briefcase. I brought the briefcase. Open it. I'm seeing nylon and paper. Bring out the nylon. Open the nylon. Papers. Open the paper. I open the first one. Open the second one. Open the third one. Oh, baby, tell me what is there now. I keep opening now. Just something. You mentioned it one day and I just felt I have to get it for you. Yeah, open it. Open it. I can feel there's a bottle. There's a bottle. Did you buy me juice? What did you buy? Oh, wow, granite. Wow, thank you so much. Ah, this is quite thoughtful. Thank you. You know, I just, and then there's a story behind the gift. You know, the other day you mentioned it, you thought I didn't hear. I actually heard you. There's never a time you say something to me that it does not stick to my spirit, not my soul. My spirit catches it. I'm like, wow, thank you so much. I appreciate you. That granite was very treasured. I was taking it one note at a time because it was special to me. I heard I love you from every crunch I took. Do you understand what I'm saying? So be very creative with um, how you give the gift. All right, now, another thing I want to talk about is giving season and out of season, okay? Now, during abasement, thank you, sir. All right, so, you know, when there is not so much available, giving that season, all right? It, it shows, it's more like a promise of, if there is more, I will do more. Do you understand? And when there is much, okay, where there is a bound, you know, you are bounding in your abundance and everything, also give glory to God. It tells a different type of story glory to god i remember the first gift that was ever given to me it was a very creative card that was very tall you know and on that card had a lot of attributes that was loved and everything i had that card for at least i still have the card that card is at least 10 years old and there's nobody taking that card away from my house my children will grow up and they will see it as the first gift that their father ever gave me glory to god hallelujah so in abasement and in aboundment i've been abounding glory to god give gifts if your significant others love language is receiving of gifts have you been blessed so far have you heard something so far 